Okay, hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Victor, and I'm going to be your uncle for this series. So this is the Cisco Ethical Hacker Lab series. Uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you could learn, you could ask questions. You can also invite others that are willing to take and interested in taking this program, this certification. On the channel, we've gone through quite a lot. We've looked at... Um, just a moment, let me get out. Um, okay, so in the series, we've looked at quite a lot. If you check the channel, the playlist, I will drop the link in the description. We've seen the entire training content. Now we're trying to go through the labs. And in the very first lab, zero, 00, we talked about the basic foundation knowledge you need to know about how to get started in the lab. Uh, the second lab, we talked about how to deploy the petrol machine. And in this very lab, we're going to be looking at how do we investigate the machine. So I have the machine here, right here. Uh, what I'm just going to do is to just start the machine. And once the machine starts, I'm going to log in and actually get to action. Okay, so I've just fired up my machine. My machine is still booting. Uh, don't forget that this particular machine, I have upgraded the machine to have about 12 grams. So one thing you could do is also make sure that your system, your virtual machine have much more RAM so that it's a little bit faster. Okay, so two things we are going to learn in this uh, particular lab. We're going to be looking at how to familiarize ourselves with the Kali Linux GUI and also the shell the command line interface. Now, one thing to know that is Linux is open source, it's fast, it's reliable, and it's also very small. Wrist watches, uh, routers, switches, some TVs, most devices that are, even IoT devices run on Linux because it's very lightweight and it gives you a lot of flexibility. From wrist watches to supercomputers actually run on Linux. Now, some other distribution of what we call distros, uh, like Debian, Red Hat, Ubuntu, Central Centers, of course, for the hosting, for data centers, and all of that. So what are we going to need for this particular lab? We will need our Kali Linux virtual machine that we need internet access. Now, instructions, part one, we're going to familiarize ourselves with the GUI. I we push this up to this extent. Let me see up to something like this so that I have, okay, good. So one thing I want to do is to log into the system first, A, to Kali, Kali, I log in. I will allow the system to boot up. Once it's logged in, uh, so once it's logged in, I want something like this so that I have enough room. <coughs> Okay, sorry, so I'm going to log in and I will have my desktop. Of course, you could change your desktop. Um, you close up all of this, you could change your desktop background and all of that. I might do small, short videos on different items uh, on how to navigate, but I will just stick to the lab. Things like how to use some of the commands, how to navigate around. But here, I will just stick to the lab. So I will take some very important aspects of the lab. We've logged into the machine. We will see, if you tap on this place, you see quite a lot of the different apps grouped, right? Now, you're going to see that you have folders, right? You have the home that gives you access to different folders. I have some files here, you have pictures just like your regular PC, right? You have desktop, you have videos, you can create a folder and say, okay, uh, ethical hacker videos, just like your regular, just like your regular, what's it called? Like your regular folders you have in your PC. Now, uh, you can also go to Firefox, normally, this system is going to come shipped with uh, Firefox. You can also install other 
our browsers. We could go through that later on. So if I say ctlhub.africa, you could browse. There are some instances where you might have issues with your particular system browsing. I can do another video on how to sort that out. It will just be as a result of DNS issues. So if you have such kind of questions, you can ask in the comment section. I'm going to give you a reply. Now, you could also go to the terminal. You see this guy and just do a directory, right? You could see all the, what's it called? All the files you have here or all the folders you have within this home. So if you say PWD, it's going to be present working directory. Where are you currently in your machine? So we're going to be examining some commands. Now, there are a few things you see your network adapter to say, okay, what are you using to connect? You see your mic, your the volume, you could increase and decrease that. You see your time, you see uh, your, the, what's it called? Your lock screen, you can lock the screen so that it's just like saying uh, when you do Windows L or Windows machine. So you have your battery, you have your, your sign out, log out button and all of that. So basically all you're going to have in a regular computer. Now, uh, let's just uh, navigate to the application menu, uh, start. So if you tap on this guy, it's going to give you all of this thing that will show all of the applications. You see different tools. Uh, you could navigate to each of them to see what is inside each of them, like SQL map, use that for SQL injection, social engineering toolkit, if you need to like clone some kind of stuff like Facebook, Twitter, and all of that to try to do phishing. Then you have search plots, you have SMF, SF, uh, SF, uh, MSF payload creator, you have Metasploit framework, you have quite a lot of them. So for reverse engineering, you have some there for post exploitation, for reporting to uh, Faraday Multigo. These are very, very nice tools. Now for your goal, for instance, is to make sure that in each of the folders, you want to learn like at least four or five tools. So you're very comfortable. And one thing you need to note is that though you have roughly quite above a hundred tools here, most of the tools are going to be doing the same thing, right? So you don't necessarily need to learn all of the tools. Like if you come to DNS analysis, for instance, if you come to DNS analysis, you're going to see, you see, you see you have a DNS enum, that's DNS enumeration, DNS reconnaissance, then first. Just pick one tool there and master how to use it and you should be fine. The goal is that for a domain name, for a server, for a directory, you want to know what domain name service is running. Most of these items, you're going to see other tools that still do the same thing. So the idea is not to convince yourself about knowing how to use a thousand tools, but it's to be able to deliver a particular result at every particular point in time. So just a few tools, all that in the different phases of an attack, it's perfect. Okay, so we're going to try to go familiarize ourselves. <coughs> so part two is going to be familiarize yourself with Kalinux shell. Uh, one important one is ma. Uh, if I come here and say ls, so ls we also just list my directory. Then there's this command we call man, right? So man is like manual. So Linux command are programs created to perform specific tasks. Use the man command is short for manual to obtain detailed documentation about the command. So let's say there is a command PWD and I want to get a manual, a documentation, a guideline for how to use a particular command. I can just say man PWD, right? If I do that, it's going to give me description. It's like a help guide, like a manual of how to use that particular command. So you see, What's PWD is present working directory is going to tell you where you are at every particular point in time. Anytime I do a PWD space dash P, uh, it's going to avoid all sim links, right? If I say PWD space dash dash help, it's going to display the help on how to use that particular command. So that's what the man command does. 